Some of the people shouting came from Wolverhampton. Am I pronouncing it right? <laughs> Manchester. You, you see, you should shout because somebody reached out to me today, weeping. Wolverhampton. I said, Umfo was come yesterday. You should have. Praise God. The train people have nothing on us. <laughs> so all the apologies that came from train station, we understand. That's why we'll soon be fully functional in the Philip dimension. So that we'll just be potty. Praise God. Amen. They just wonder, what is he doing in their country? Does he have visa? No, I just put <laughs> I just put it. Put in galore. Praise God. Ocheli Okutepa is my name. I'm married to one female wife. She was, she was born Julia. She was born Julia, not Julius. She's a woman by creation, not construction. Praise God. Very important to clarify. I've not spoken about anybody. I just spoke about my own. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I met her 19 years ago, first year in university. They say the love will expire, but I think it's getting deeper. So I really don't know what to do about what he's doing me. Praise God. Amen. Baby, if you are watching. <laughs> <laughs> if you are watching, just be excited. It's not your fault. It's God that did it for you. I gave you a man that has sense. <laughs> and that's what I pray for all my sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. Man that has sense. Somebody says he's boasting. Paul says, I make my boast in the Lord. My wife is my lifelong project. I will love her till I die. Like I've been saying, she's the only plan I have. No plan B. <laughs> in Nigeria, there is no plan B. <laughs> Praise God. Hmm. It's my mood dog that sang, I love sitting at your feet. I love hearing what you say. I love knowing your desires. You don't do. All right, Second Corinthians chapter. Okay, first of all, let's start with First Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 2, rather. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language like Jesus would have done with he physically present here. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations I bring that at the end of the day our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There is a massive contention that we sometimes do not pay attention to. And the contention is very deep. I was saying to my brother yesterday, when you walk the streets of London or walk the streets of any part of the world, okay, this is my third journey this year on mission for Jesus Christ, South Africa, Kenya, here, then of course Nigeria, we've done a lot. Satan has a way of masking the lie in the normal. He masks the lie in the normal. Like I've been teaching in some online series we've been having, people take fear to be a natural phenomenon and that's a lie. Fear is a spirit. The Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear. So anytime you were afraid, a spirit was involved. It's just that your senses did not see the spirit, so you assumed nobody was present. And in fact, most of the conversations you have in your heart or in your soul that are fearful are lies told you by demons in first person. Um, Imam Noah, please come. Let's do the same thing we're doing online just to lay foundation. That's my younger brother. Forget the size. All right. <clears throat> a senior. <I'm. laughs> He's single, but he has one girl now. <laughs> single, they say that you're not married. Oh. You're just single and hitched. What? <laughs> I don't have a brother that is holding the microphone. You just use your anyhow. You understand? Close your, close your eyes. And no, you don't have to go down because you're tall. Let them see your head. Just, just watch this. This guy is in his room alone in the human sense. Nobody with him. Eyes closed. Then the next thing he hears is, I will die. This demon is so smart, he speaks in the first person to your hearing. So what you do is you adopt his speaking as yours. You just heard a voice. 
and he has the capacity to speak and you listen because of your spirit. But we are so attuned to the normal that we miss the reality. So this spirit is very aware of your spiritual reality and knows that voices are flying all the time just like radio frequencies and he hears, I will die. Then he begins to meditate on, I will die. This is exactly what happens to single people when they get locked up in that, I'm going to die single. Nobody likes me. Or somebody is waited for having babies for, if I don't want you to make me laugh, some people just marry six months later, man, oh God, I don't understand what's going on. Six months, please keep having sex. <laughs> Hello. Just continue, continue, continue. You don't even know what they're asking for. Children, walk. <laughs> Intensive walk. The Spirit is speaking. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 6. Take no thought saying. The next thing he does is to open his mouth and to validate a strange voice. But he doesn't know what he has done or the transaction that has gone on. Now, why am I speaking about the contention? Because Satan is powerless until you endorse it. So most of the things that don't go well in our lives look like. But I thought about it and it happened. No, it happened because you thought about it. It wasn't going to happen. So thinking about it shouldn't have been natural. When I met Julia, I told her something. I don't have a reason to succeed in marriage. Because I didn't have a template to look at. So humanly speaking, I was disadvantaged. But I said to her, you know what? It's the thought you take that will craft your experience. And these spirits are speaking tete every second. I mean, these guys are talking. It's just like, thank you, guy. I was in South Africa, and this guy, somebody sent me a message. I mean, I was serving the Lord. I was going to go back to my family, my business, and everything that I represent. And somebody sends me a message on Facebook, um, Instagram. If I sent on Facebook, sent on Instagram, because it was urgent to him. Talking about seeing me in an obituary situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, old school mate, blah, blah. We have not seen for how many years, blah, blah, blah. Here's the point. No speaking takes me by surprise. Why? I have an active spirit. So that your ordinary dream does not dictate my situation or emotion. I checked with his message and there was no click in my spirit. So to be polite, I just said to him, all is well, all is well. So I was in the plane, I was flying Ethiopia at that time, and we were heading to Addis. Then we hit the normal thing people hit every day. Guguruguru. And the voice came. Because it's about the voice. This is it! And as a Nigerian that I am, this is not it! So that I don't jeopardize every other person in that plane. Hope you know that what happened to Jonah and the others happened because of Jonah. The rest were not involved in the transaction. Ah, not here, not now, not today. We have a different plan. Hey, these are the kind of things you say. Very modern people now say, look at them. Let's face reality. Regini. Because demons are marked in normal. So lives have been, marriages have been dictated by normal. Relationship status have been dictated by normal. And you know the thing about the spirits that talk to you? They are very familiar spirits. They have been traveling with you for very long. In fact, they inherited you from your grandfather. They know your history. That's why they come with facts. They know all your cousins whose marriages have failed. And they come to announce to you, you are the next now, why are you... Why, why are you not cooperating? It's still not my turn. They know your auntie that is 47 and a half. And they coincidentally were there when you were born in 1983. <laughs> don't mind my brother today. He can laugh. He has been laughing since yesterday. So they come with facts. They come with facts. They know the health issue in your family. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. 
my reality is different. So we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. Ha! You are seeing me as a gala man, you are missing it. That's where I came through. But there's a new place I belong. This place determines my reality. That's why one of the things that has bothered your heart the most is statistics. So, when you want to fly, you now check the record of air safety versus land safety and coach safety. That's why I meet, I meet a lot of single people that are very funny. Hey. Calculations and permutations. Some, if you know the number of times, if, I, if I'm giving a pound for every time somebody asks me, actually, I don't know how it will happen. I'll be a billionaire in pounds. What is my concern with how it will happen when I serve the orchestrator of life? He's the one that orchestrates things. So all I need to do is to change my focus and to discern the voices I'm hearing. The contention is so real. Oh, I called scripture that I didn't read, but here we are still on. I say 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For context, I was going to read from verse 6. I'll read from verse 1. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence of human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and in great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise, persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. That's what I'm talking about. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. This is why I tell people, 17 ways to love your wife. Buy her credit. Give her credit a lot. Give her more money. Add money on top. Do this. Do that. Who don't fix ordinary migraine? There are, good, there are good things you do in life that cannot fix certain spiritual things when they come. And let me tell you what the devil does with us. The devil attacks us in bits. It's like you're in grade one of attack. If you successfully defeat him. See, some people are still in grade one of fight. Somebody doesn't greet them, they're in depression for three days. So Satan doesn't even bother to bring big things. Just be making all the neighbors to frown. That's all. He says, so that your wisdom, all right, so that your faith does not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Verse 6. We do, however, speak. Yeah, we're speaking. A message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age, which is coming to nothing. That's where I begin my conversation. There are three classes of wisdom on earth today. Not just in relationship and marriage. There's the wisdom of man. There's the wisdom of the rulers of this age. Then there's the wisdom of God. <laughs> wisdom of man is good, but it's limited. For instance, I'll give you an example. It's, it's, it's good and good teaching to love Julia, shower affection on her, make her the object of my affection. That's beautiful. It is better when I transit into the wisdom of God to be able to contend, like I say to people, six pack without spiritual pack. In fact, I just, still not, I'm still wondering the use of some six pack. I've never had to beat any man because of my wife. So be, my physical strength can be useless in certain regard. But there are demons that I don't need physical strength for. What I need is the capacity to say, Satan, not here, not now, and never. Why? When the devil realizes that you catch up to human wisdom, he will speak, switch to spiritual things. And I'm going to give practical example. For instance, there is an extent to which you will go with conflict management skills. Hope you know there are certain quarrels that are demonically engineered. As in, demon, they inside. He's just doing it. You know, and those of your village people just come on you. Shout at him. 
shout at him. Shout now. Shout. If, I, if you don't shout, you will die. Shout. Just shout. It is only here that can save you of that one. Here, not here. Because here you have the valid reasons to shout. That's what the Bible says. Soft answer turns away wrath. That's the dimension. In essence, the wrath is coming. I couldn't stop it from coming. But I can choose my answer. Only God. Hey, let, let me tell you. I know you're 38. I know you're 38. I know you're 38. Wisdom has finished. You have smiled at all the guys. You have greeted all the brothers in church. If they text you, it text back. You have finished it here. Then you are wondering, what till it mean? Hey, somebody won't send me a message. It's not that I'm not fine. I'm fine. Oh, God. You people are laughing now. I know the messages I receive. What is he doing? He's turning up the heat. And when we begin to feel discouraged, we know that we serve a God. Jesus himself, Luke chapter 4, who was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he beat the devil, the Bible didn't say he beat him for life. The Bible said he left him for a season. He left him for a season. Just a season. And I'll tell you, the contention is beyond you. I, if I don't beat the contention, will I be in London shouting the gospel? People think this is a family problem. It's not a family problem. Nothing ends your calling like a bad marriage. It swallows it and kills it, buries it. But the problem is when we deal with believers who have not even understood that they are first called, then Satan kept them busy with a bad marriage. Double Hala. This one doesn't even know he's called. That's why I keep shouting to single people. God is more interested in your getting married than you are to get married. I'm telling you. Why? There's such a purpose tied to it. So I spend a lot of time talking to single people how to get the count because you know what the devil does? It's the same contention I'm talking about. What he does is he turns attention to you and make you your trouble so you think that all you have to do is to worry. So he has made you the agenda of your life for the last six months, for the last ten years. Whereas there's a pathway. There's a pathway to go and say, you know what, sir? <laughs> I know you have plans. Can we talk about the plans? So, he says, the wisdom we speak is not the wisdom of man. Because there's a limit to the wisdom of man. Then there's a new one now. Hey, they say I'm in London. I should be careful. But I'm going to try to be careful. You know, there's, there's, there's a demonic wisdom. Demon. De, de, see, there are certain wisdom. Eh? They are just not natural. They are demon. Demon is inside it. If you choose to be Nigerian small, you see it. <laughs> like somebody met my wife. She was having quarrel with her boyfriend. Guess what? Somebody advised. You, you know there are certain breakups that are demonic, man. You don't know. I'll give you an example of that kind of breakup. Somebody told the person to just do fake breakup. The other person will just come to their senses. Then they did fake breakup and the person took it as serious breakup and refused to come back. <laughs> so the demon brought wisdom. Fake. The demon now quickly, after telling you, do a fake one. Look at this one. The moment she does it, make it serious. It's the same demon. He went here, he went here. So you came. I really don't think we can keep doing this. <laughs> hey, guy, eh? They're gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, if you are listening, I didn't come to preach lack of hope. <laughs> Wherever you are, God is sorting you. Amen. So, mistakes don't count when we meet, meet God, okay? But here's it. So, if you are not spiritually discerning, see, let me, let me be honest with you. The reason why the contention happens is that Satan wants to keep you busy outside your purpose. All the contention comes to do is to keep you busy. See, I tell people, let me not lie to you. I always tell Julia this. So the time I should be using to advance the ministry, advance the family, train my children, I'll be using it to lose two weeks in malice with my wife. I must be mad. Two weeks, you're not talking. The Bible says we'll give account of every single word we... Do you know we're going to account for every minute? So I'll spend two weeks 
not making progress. When the Bible says in Matthew 18, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything, my hack for miracle, I'm fighting her. The very one that if I collaborate with her, the album goes sell. So it's a contention. And the contention makes sense. It comes at you. I mean, he makes it so normal. The thing makes sense, real sense. Let me say something to you. Anything that is not dipped in the reality that God conveys is a lie. I, I speak to single people. If you read Mark eleven twenty four, the Bible says, "What things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have." Desire. I don't know what desire is, means in your village. He said, what things soever you desire, what things soever. I don't know what, what things soever means in your village, but in my village it means anything. The only caveat to that is in James where he says, you pray and receive not because you pray means to squander on your lust. So I define desire and I clarify what desire is from what lust is. Desire is anything I want that God wants. Lust is anything I want that God does not want. So I desire marriage. God wants marriage. He even says in Isaiah 34 that none of these shall lack their mate. Speaking to old, not human being, oh, oh, vulture, vulture. God says, vulture, no go lack husband, no go lack wife. Then you come to me, human being that God made in his image and likeness. God will come sit down for heaven and say, you, I created you to be stressed with singlehood. I want you to worry very well so that I can feel like God. Is that the God you serve? But you know what the devil does? The contention is to bring you, for instance, into worry. Because every time we live in worry, we lose our power. We're so powerful. And like I say in our classes, jokingly, worry even has praise and worship. Lord, you are so wicked. Lord, you are terrible. Lord, you are dangerous. You just made me to be suffering here. I will not sleep this night. Even though my sleeplessness will not fix anything, I will stay here and sorrow. Lord, you are terrible. I cannot find pounds in this London. Ordinary one pound, I know. <laughs> What is he doing? When he said, take no thought, saying. Take no thought, saying. Take no thought, saying. So you feel like you're so much in trouble. You're in trouble because you have been saying trouble. And I did not come to teach affirmation. I'm teaching the word of God. Because affirmation has expired it. What the devil does to affirmation, new age doctrine, is to pressure you until you drop the affirmation. When my heart is fixed. Ah, like that song, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me give you a strategy. For every level you conquer, Satan brings the next level. So he looks at you. Okay. You are single. You are now married. Can we compromise the marriage? If you beat him in that and you become stable, can we compromise parenting? Because I tell people there are three dimensions. If I, when I meet young chaps who are arrogant about learning parenting, I laugh. There are three stages of parenting, for example, talking about the contention. There's the total dependence phase where the children are so dependent on you. That's the most wasted phase of parenting I know till today. Wasted! I serve in the teens church in church and I meet a lot of people's children whose voice will never matter in the lives of their children ever again because there is a face where everything you say is what they know and what they do. Wasted by parents, chasing money, trying to become something. <laughs> then they move into the next phase where you have lost the capacity to control the narrative. They become discussants on the panel with you. The third phase is the hardest for a lot of parents, the legacy phase. All is 
done and out of your hand, then your seed will give you the result of your effort. The contention never ceases. It's, a, it's an ongoing contention. And you may wonder, just in case you attend a Bible-believing church, and you have been taught all the kind of faith you need to be taught in the word. And you say, how did I miss road and enter this program and this guy is just elevating the devil? How did he come to elevate the devil? The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many, the righteous, not the sinful. He said, but the Lord God delivers him from them all. I'm talking about how we answer the multiple darts that are thrown at us. Because all this year, everybody is starting relationship page. What do they want to address? People's fears. It's fear they want to address now. Nothing else. That's why even people that are called and those that are not called, everybody's opening a relationship page. Some of them will be giving relationships. I just wonder, you yourself, you need help for what I can see. There's one dangerous one in Nigeria. I refuse to call her name. That one has gone bonkers. Wisdom of this age, wisdom of man, wisdom of demons combined in one head. Confused human being. That's why they market they sell. Even though I know they sell it. That's why I used to even wonder how hundreds of thousands of people follow us. Because me, I don't to lie. I'll just be saying the truth. Telling you. Do you notice? Because they say, where this meeting will be going now, you'll be laughing scenes, yeah, 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 things, things that will not profit you. Just go back home. How was it? Oh, it was nice. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice. There are two ways to smile at somebody that's not smiling. <laughs> yeah, I don't smile and so what? I'm talking contention. Why? Two things are connected to my response to the contention. Number one, my peace. Number two, my legacy. See, loving my wife is a plan. It's low-cost channel to peace in life. See, as I'm talking about Julia now, I've bought peace for one year. She said it was in London talking about me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Low cost. It's not expensive at all. I didn't buy anything. I'm not going to shop. <laughs> Yet, are you giving me the money? You can come and say it. We finished vacation before I came here. Don't, don't talk like that. You don't even know if there was if there was train from Dubai here, I would have entered. After they don't chop me for Dubai, I finished. Tell me, we shop here. I came to rest and preach. <laughs> Contention. And this contention is going to run through your mind. That's why I gave the illustration I gave. This guy is speaking. Let me tell you. And that's why the world are afraid to listen to the kind of things I say. I will never leave my wife. I'm not doing positive confession. I am telling you a conviction that has been bursted by silencing the demons that speak. Gain no fear, fine, rich again. Fine for where? How? Hard. If you try, you just activate my body. My body may just respond to you. But my decision can never follow you. <laughs> hey! That's why Paul says, this body of death that we are will go this cat down. But do you know what we do? We silence the flesh. Flesh, keep quiet. I know say they get fine, but be moving, be moving, be moving. Be moving, 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 be moving. Focus, focus, focus. I see one woman come jump for me. Lege de ge de ge de. Imbra, gada, gada, gada. Hey, la baba. Jesus, Jesus. Glory. It was a trap situation. Man kalika, ilambo, po, 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 to kopa. You know what? Ha, Julia did not believe. Julia will not believe. I said this one here. Do you know that day, ba? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. La da gada gada gada. La gada gada. Hey. I was hearing things I could not imagine. Eh? You have us now, have wife. Said that no single person is in this time now. <laughs> but see, brother, what happened? See, when we talk about contention, it's very real. This particular thing I'm talking about, I've never experienced something like that in my life. I began to sense the arrival of multiple demons. I'm not kidding. Everything going on flesh wise ceased. I mean, I felt such presence. I'm like, this one is not natural temptation. It's not, this is not a, a, a natural transaction. This transaction that this person came to negotiate, he's not, he's not, no, see, this one, there's a sending. 
Hey, my God is good. Oh. Ah! I said, for where? Hey, talk to and say, stop it. Don't go. When I don't already sense the legions, we arrive. Contending for both me, my ministry, my family, and my future. We're not doing this transaction. We're not doing this transaction. Contention! And the funny thing is that the contention will come in ways that look natural. So you lose your job, you think it's job. No, the aim was depression. Mm. Because the place of depression is the place where your power is gone. So that every other thing associated with your destiny. So marriage has not yet happened. But it's convincing you it will never happen. Child has not yet come. It's convincing you it will never come. Marriage is shaky. And it looks like just filling a form and signing it is it. <laughs> it's a very strong contention. And the contention is always based on facts. He knows everybody with problem. And let me tell you one of the things that contention keeps you away from. Contention keeps you away from the knowledge you need to excel. Because what he does with the contention is to make you feel like you're in a dead end. And the moment you feel it's a dead end, there's no more need for wisdom. So, rather than pick a book, for instance, I was gifted a book I went to preach somewhere, for, uh, Bad Dads of the Bible, which is teaching me a lot of lessons. Rather than pick it, I just conclude, parenting is too hard. Or you're going to hear one demonic wisdom, children will become whatever they will become. That's a lie. That's a lie. Even God needed a strategy for Jesus not to miss it. And I'll give you that strategy. I call it informed parenting. Why did God give them multiple visions before he gave them his son? Because he wanted them to know what to do with his son. That's why when Joseph wanted to put her away quietly, the Lord had to appear again. That child is a holy thing. Don't let that girl go. That's why I did X, Y, Z. So Joseph got back to information. Do you know there are many decisions we take because we are not informed? So contention happens. I begin to speak to my wife in a certain way. Why? I'm not informed. I will never forget this one. I'll give you an example. Practical example. Julia and I had been attending a couple's meeting in church, one flesh. I don't know where that quarrel came from. We got into the car and got into a misunderstanding. <laughs> but I get smart that day. Jesus. I was angry. My wife just went, Mark, Carlo, call Satan, not today. <laughs> Have you ever been in a place where your spouse is praying but you're irritated? Why are you even praying? <laughs> Sin says. Say, baby, not today. <laughs> Labor the car. Labor guinea. Is it Labor party? Or Tori? I was foaming. And like I have been telling my last daughter, anytime you're foaming, Satan is pumping you. <laughs> I was foaming. And she went, Nan Kosu Tope. Labor the car. That's when I realized that although I cannot be possessed, I'm currently obsessed with demons. Why is tongues affecting me? <laughs> if I'm not involved with something, mingle keke. Makayagaba! When your anger reaches its limits, that laugh. <laughs> Guess what? Games village round about. You don't know it, some of you. We had a near fatal accident. Missed by the whisker. Just like this. What was he doing? He invited us to the place where we would lose it so that he can gain it. So that sleepless night you had last night, it was a transaction. It was not a sleepless night. It had more tied to it. When you understand this, you begin to treat your moments with caution. I speak to single people. You are looking for how it will happen. I don't care how it will happen because I serve the one who knows how to orchestrate. The one who walks Adam up and says, enough, it's time to marry. Please, can you fetch Adam's application form for wife? Let me see. Can you show me the job advert for marriage that Adam filled? No. God just say, oh boy, he say, it's enough. It's time. Don't we serve the one for whom gallows were made? And he said, the one who made it will hang on it because Mordecai will be reading through the city in glory. Just like the Bible says in Psalm. 
Lord, how our day increase, thou troubled me. Many are they that rise up against me. Then they have the effrontery to say, let us see what his hope is in God. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. By glory, you lift my hand. <laughs> He wants to make it normal. He wants to make affliction natural. So there are things we look at and we normalize. So I tell people, yes, I'm training children. Yes, I can take them to the hospital. But woe be me the day that I think the hospital is the answer. Hospital is my responsibility as a parent not to be reckless with them. When I'm done, as they're taking the paracetamol, I'm going on and say, Satan, you don't have a place here. I didn't take these babies from you. I took them from God. Why do I sound like a madman telling you these things? Because first of all, you can apply paracetamol when they call it headache because you think that one will go until they call it a name that looks terminal. It's a training. It's a contention in phases. So if I don't learn to win, when is paracetamol? I may not win when they say I have to inject myself every day all the days of my life. It's a contention. I tell people it's the same formula for I want to marry. I want to have a baby. I know the story of somebody who has four children with a womb. <laughs> I know the story of a family who just, I heard my pastor say it and he, he doesn't lie. <laughs> so I believe it, I'll say it. The child got the eyes injured, playing in the garden, fell on something, and the thing collected the eyeball, actually. So they went for operation, operated it in. Then anytime doctors will understand better, the plaster has to come off, the plaster goes again with the eye. New believers, they didn't even understand big English. You know, sometimes the problem with Christians in the body of Christ today is that we are actually the modern expression of the Pharisees. We are so conversant with God that we no longer actually believe him. We are now in Christian association where we just go to every Sabbath or Sunday, whichever one we attend, just attend it, but we have lost touch with who he is. These ones had not yet been corrupted by religion. So they bought, is it integrity music or something? I were just playing because that's the only way they knew how to just do something God. They did and did. They did and did. They did and did. Contention. The things that are depressing you are supposed to be dealt with by you, not depressed. You're not supposed to. That's where we come to and we come into power. Hey. One of the parents, I can't remember now, the mother or the father, fell into a trance found herself or himself in like a warehouse that looked like heaven. And she saw limbs and body parts. And Jesus said, these are answered prayers of my saints that they don't know how to receive. I have answered, but they no collect them. You know, it's just like if I send 20,000 pounds to your account, who would like that? Anybody here? Okay, praise God, praise God. But you don't go to withdraw it. Then you are lamenting, I have no cash. No, you have money. It's cash you don't have. So you can go withdraw the cash. Are you single? Now, husband or wife, you never cash. That's what the Bible says in Mark 11, 24, what things you ever desire. When you pray, believe you receive. Receiving is when it enters. And then you shall have. Having is when you collect. She came out of that trance. Guess what? Brand new eye and the flesh around it was like newborn baby. What just happened? Somebody just went beyond worry. Not even prayer again, but thanksgiving. You know, we know how to stylishly line inside church. We sing songs we don't believe. I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. Until you leave stay in the house. 
And the first thing that meets you, who are you? I don't know. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. I'm walking in miracle. You know how powerful that sounds. Uh, let, let me bring it to the one that will enter children of God now. Do you know that's why you have a lot of Christian husbands and wives who are not born again? People who don't read Ephesians chapter 5, who don't read 1 Peter 3, 1 Corinthians 13 and 7, they don't read it. Because our power to win the contention is the power of revelation. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself. My calling is to die. So why are they vexed? He said, why we yet sinners? That means my wife doesn't have to act right to be loved by me. Simple. Ha, and that impresses women when I say it. But your calling is a call to submission. Whether it has sense or it doesn't have sense. First Peter 3. For the single, it's a simple instruction. Marry who you can submit to. If you marry a dog, <laughs> the Lord is good. Because the power of my contention is the word on which I walk. So I know if you say at the church, there are a lot of Christian couples coming to church. The word of God is not working their life. Why is it not working? I don't want to enter Bible debate. Me and my brother used to know how to debate Bible. He is a Bible guru. But I read a scripture, for example, I give you an example. In, I think, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, where it talks about the covering of the hair. I didn't cover spiritual debates. Some churches cover, some don't cover. But that particular verse said something very simple. It says, the woman should have that symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Finish. Uh -uh. What did it concern angels? Concern my wife's head. Why? When spiritual activity has to happen in my life, God needs to see order. So what the devil is contending for is the order. So God can be channeling somebody that went and stayed in Canada instead of being in UK to marry you. God would have started the process of returning them to UK. Then it's that moment God said, delay by two years. Why? First Corinthians 14, 40. Let everything be done decently and in order. Why in order? God loves you so much. Why do bad things happen? Because we must plug into the order. So the contention is to take us out of order. That's the contention. I'll give you an example. If you have a radio app on your phone, frequencies are flying here, but you're not connected. That's why you can't hear them. Not that there are no radio frequencies here now. They are flying. In fact, sometimes when you go for meetings like this and you want to use a uh, cordless mic, it starts picking radio self. It's connecting to something. There is nothing you are hoping for that does not already exist in the spirit. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so, the contention is to unsettle us from the order. This is how I started fixing my broke problem. Because the money is available now. Why is it not entering my hand? Are we fighting? I'm not fighting money. What order do I plug into? Number one, the order of speech. Number two, the order of conduct. That's what I tell people everywhere I go to teach. My wife's weakness is my personal business. Don't expect that because I came to teach. I'm so realistic. I'll tell you, Julia doesn't have sense. That's, that's not, it's not your portion. It's not for me to you. It's for me to deal with my order issue where I need to deal with it. Order! There are certain things that I can't hear from my mouth. It will be validating the things he's throwing at me. Not here, not now, not today. I'll give you an example. This is why I bless my children every day. They know the routine in, in the house. You can't go to school without submitting your head. Daddy, I come for the blessing. And trust her, now she's the one that used to lead the pack. Oh, dear, Ella, come and take the blessing. Paya, kako, kopaya. There's another. You are safe. No bad news. No disaster. No evil. Come near you. Paka doko pe. Ekataya. 
It looks like I'm playing. No, it's order. Who is their father? Me. I carry a governmental authority on their life. So, order. The contention comes to unsettle to you. Hey. Do you know a lot of couples are fighting about what they should be praying about? If my wife begins to intensively lack sense, it's not time to confront. Kalabra suto pata. Jakato pata kata. The heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. He stares it where he wills. I didn't marry a wife to have contention, confusion. La poko suto pratia. Lord, I thank you for a good wife. Ivran to sukopalia. Igasuto pakali katopalia. Satan, not today, not here, not now, never. Huh, somebody just say, face reality. This is my reality. Because when village people want to move, they start with one. And the target is both. Because if they get one, let me tell you, this is why in marriages, I'll give you a pattern. Satan often focuses so intensively on one. Because if he can get that one to invite the other one into dysfunction, they are finished. It's not like the principle of wrestling. Those I know the principle. I they watch wrestling, those are the six one thing why don't turn to principle. Actually, snappy picture. Come, let's do an example again. Just become it, become it. In fact, you are looking like those wrestlers of those days. So please snap this thing we are doing so that our father will know that we are making it in life. <laughs> it's now you are coming. Be doing that thing, it is to help. Strings. Since you are very big, let me be the one with the advantage. Because I give you advantage over me, you just kill me. Bend down, bend down now. Your babe may be watching, but bend down. Let him know, let her know you have an elder brother. Hold his leg, hold his leg, hold his leg. Hold it tight. Now, watch this. I have the advantage. I am hit him. But he noticed I have a bad knee. So he submits his back for my beating. Because he knows that the power in my arm can be drained by the weakness in my knee. So he stays focused on the knee. That's why all of us have a contention that is repetitive. That one know they go. I got money but this is my grain. Academically, I'm fine, but nobody's greeting me for three years. And I want to marry. Now I marry sharp, sharp. Picking and no one see. He will pick one area and put pressure. Now, if this is marriage, assume this is the husband, this is the wife. What is he doing? He wants to weaken the strength here by taking advantage of the weakness here. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what do I do? Hitting him now is not the problem. Is that I have an injury he's taking advantage of. That's what the Bible says. That I should lay aside every weakness that easily. In essence, there are prayers some people have been praying. They are not focusing on their real problem. When I find the one that he has chosen to use to end every other part, I leave every other thing and I focus here. That's why I tell some men, you don't have money problem. You have woman problem. So you need to go and learn everything about woman problem. All the boundaries you don't know how to put. Like I was telling my brother yesterday jokingly. And I share this as a secret to men. Anytime your flesh wants to over wake up, enter extended fast. You get a kind of fast way good. Even if you make a woman, you go look the woman, you go look yourself. I've been there several times. You're sending me, you're sending me Hot hot is. The fire can't burn me. My flesh is, is under. I can't answer. I can't waste my one month fasting on top of small breasts. It's not possible. It's not possible. You know, I've been fasting. If you didn't meet me fasting, maybe I would have been more tempted. But right now, I'm even struggling for energy to be awake. No show, no show, no show, no show. Fasting, fasting. Go to work, he can work. The things refuse to stand up because they're not on that. What is he doing? He's speaking.
even on one area. He keeps bombarding it. And it comes to you with history. You have forgotten you. Not be you. Forget it. You can't go past this. There will be no enemies if we are not going somewhere. So every time the devil attacks, I just know he's fighting something. So his attack is not a proof that I have lost. It's a proof that he's afraid. So he wants to hit so hard until I stop the journey. There's a journey. And let me say this with every sense of responsibility. You are not in a place too hard that God can't fix. Just in case it's even your fault that you are where you are, whatever it is. It's a contention. He wants you to give up. He wants you to collapse. He wants you to hand him your victory. I'm not letting go of my victory. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm an example of a good man. I'm an example of a good father. I'm not letting go. I'm a faithful man. I'm not letting go. I'm a good wife. I'm not letting go. I'm a single who is getting into a purposeful marriage. I'm not letting go. I have my children in this life. I'm not letting go. I have a peaceful family that will be the desire of nations. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. Satan, thank you for the history. But my history is not my destiny. I'm not letting go. Thank you for the weaknesses you brought. There's grace coming from Calvary. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Ah, though I walk in the flesh, I do not walk for the flesh. For the weapons of my warfare, they are not physical. They are mighty through God. Through the pulling down strongholds, casting down imagination, every thought and intent that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. You say, my son is going to die. He's not dying. My child is not asthmatic. My child is not a special needs child. According to the definition of the world, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. If I'll be the first in my family to be in a stable marriage, so be it. I'm not letting go. My history is not my destiny. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. It's a contention that I'm not going to fail at. I'm not letting go. Let me tell you one of the things I began to pray when they did that nonsense to me. I said, I don't care the merits or the merits of my visa application. I command whoever is sitting on it right now, come under the anointing and grant it. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I came to tell you the world is making letting go normal. Very normal. I'm not letting go. I have something to do. I'm on a mission. I don't quit. I'm not letting go. Righteousness is not so hard. I'm not letting go. Being upright is not so hard. I'm not letting go. Oh, give me history. I'm the one who failed before. That's true. That's true. Very true. Very true, very true, but it's not about my history. It's about my destiny. I'm not letting go. So I stopped focusing on the issue. So I used to be a hungry, an angry person. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Somebody once asked me, what's your temperament? I say, Holy Spirit. Why are you trying to box me into a behavior? Yeah, I may speak more than my wife, but what's my temperament? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thanks. Final point I'll make. How do I attain this? I soak. I soak. I soak. I'm the man I am because of my soaking. That's why there are friends I can't keep. There are places I can't go. There are people I can't roll with. Oh, I roll with Jesus' people. I roll with the presence of God. My wife is a happier woman the more I go into God's presence. Your husband is a happier person just because you go into God's presence. Your children are better off for it because you go into God's presence. It's by soaking, I told my wife, I don't know my children by scan. 
I know them by soaking. So my in-laws, before I came up, daddy was watching. In case daddy is watching, I'm not lying. Five girls. Mommy insisted and collected a boy. Me, I don't have that kind of insistence. I got the gift picking. But, so her elder sister married and started with twin girls. So the normal thing of the heart was how far. You know when Satan begins to distribute an agitation in the family? She wanted to do scan. I say, I saw that you are a child and his name is David. She went for a scan. The boy covered her leg. <laughs> I said, bye boy things. I saw. I saw my eye. And his name is David. She began to believe in me more. I was in Aberdeen here for my master's. She was pregnant with Ariella. And I just woke up one morning and I saw a vision, clear vision. Our house help then was with the baby. Our baby. The baby wasn't David. So I called Julia and described Ariella in her womb. I said, this one again. Again. Her believing was still rising in me. She didn't believe me. She born again. Now the third one, I, God decides, say, me and him, we no go talk again. So she called me and said, what is the Lord saying? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Boy or girl, we collect. But I think God wanted to deal with something about her fears. To say, look, your fear does not determine your life. I do. <laughs> you got times and seasons in me. wants to come. That's when I remember. He's got times and seasons in his hands. You call for light out of darkness. I'm not going to sit here and die. I'm going to soak in you. Because the realities I'm dealing with, I can't control it. And my place of controlling it is where I'm saying. Higher. Shabagabo sutopaya. Ebaraka sutopaya. Oh, Sha, somebody pray. Bagadaka sutopaya. Somebody pray. Baleka soko pena. Baraka soko pa. Baraka soko pa. Lay as if you are dying. Now lay down, lay down. Basa to soko pena. Lay down, lay down, lay down. Oh, shaka liata. Lay down, lay down. Baka seka liata. I am. Are you praying? It's time to contend. Pray. Come on, pray. I'm not drowning in any contention. Hey! London pray. pray. I lay those fears down. I lay those anxiety down. I lay those weaknesses down. I lay the history down. I lay the facts down. I lay the statistics down. Barakasota. Elakasota. Barakasota. My reality is determined by God. He's got times. He's got seasons. Right in his hands. Oh, Shaka Diata. Hey. Bagasata. Ayagazota, Bacasa Colia, Bacaso Cope, O Talia, Aracasata, Angra Casaya, Bacasica, Bacasaka. This is how Chabes changes reality. Bacasanta Lebra, Yasa Copa, Anzo Copelia, Balacasa, Abracasca, Basketa Locasca, Bacasa, Bacasa, O Shapa, Eras. Oh, she can buy. Hey, Bakasata. Hey, 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 
said to him that he should work good warfare with the prophecy that was spoken over him. The word of the Lord never fails. People only fail to maximize it. You're going to pray something now. Every word hanging on me that I've either given up on or decided to be depressed about there are points you come to, you don't ask, you demand. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Nothing he says will come back to him void. Never. But here's the deal. I can invalidate inspiration in my life. Do you know the prophecy of Jonah over Nineveh came to pass? But not in that generation. Because that generation repented. So the prophecy went back up. But they didn't go back to the one who spoke it. Go and read the book of Nahum chapter 2. Nineveh was grinded to dust to fulfill the words of Jonah because a generation came that qualified. Where do I qualify? Where I insist and say you spoke a word, it is my word. I'm not going to lose my word. Concerning my life, concerning my family, concerning my children, nah, I'm not going to lose my word. I have a word hanging, I take it. I have a word spoken over me. I take it. So every word of blessing. This is where I come to sometimes you pick your old notes and you begin to look at it. Because what the devil does is to bring you to the point where you think the prophecy is a lie. My prophecy is not a lie. Then you know the next thing he does? He gets you into the character that makes you walk away from the prophecy. 
So you realize that every time you give up on character, you lose virtue. Sorry, you give up on prophecy, you lose virtue. Because all you ask yourself, what's the need? What's the use? What's the use of prayer? What's the use of reading Bible? What's the use of insisting? What's the use of standing? When this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. All of that is happening to make you lose the word. I refuse to lose my word. <laughs> Allah God, Allah God. Oh, 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 say oh, oh, say it oh, oh, say it oh.
in the spirit. Activations. 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 You know when they came to Jesus and they were rejoicing and he said to them, I saw Satan fall. I saw him fall. Because somebody is take taking a stand and saying, you know, not again. Not with me. Never again. Not again. Not with me. Never again. I, I didn't come here to give up. <laughs> <laughs> miracles, 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 real. 
As we sing further, I don't want to assume. Sometimes we go to meetings and people just want a point of contact like hands laid on them. Not everybody. If you want that to happen as we pray, as we just keep working, very quickly, you just step out, I agree with you. All right? Now, I'm very used to allowing people just receive from the Lord. But I want to make sure so when I go anywhere, somebody's just waiting. Agree with me. Just agree with you. That's why God sends men. Do you get what I mean? Not because he's not all powerful by himself. So if you're in that category, you just step out as we worship on. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to say this now because I have released two. So yesterday morning, I came out to pray to take a prayer walk. And the Lord told me, to circle this entire block seven times with a exercise. So I plugged my ears. A kalata. He said, because I want to do something here. Let me tell you, you will go back and know that something happened here. I'm not trying to get you to believe. I just told you a transaction that happened yesterday. So I began to go around. I can't number one. Hey Lord, my fitness is under test. Kalabado kopede. Number two, bidanga rakotopele. Number three, katu kopede. We came for transaction. It's transaction we came for. I still remember as a secondary school boy. One child possessed of Satan came to my bed, and he said, "It's me that they sent him to." I didn't know I was sleeping. Some of your children will catch fire. I'm telling you. And what they saw was fire on the bed. Not the human being. I turned to them. I would, I'm dating it back because God wanted me to tell somebody. There's fire you saw on your child and you are helping the child quench it with civilization. It's a word for some. You are using civilization to quench the fire. You saw the fire. You are putting it out. With, you are involved in the putting out of the fire. That's how one day when they hosted, I was leading devotion and the spirit of the Lord just came over me. He said, lock all the doors. I didn't know. There was one boy we didn't know until that day, heavily possessed. If I did not hear the instruction to lock the doors, well, you know how student hosted can be large, 200 or something, or perhaps 100. The last person, there were two doors involved in that hall. The last person barely locked the door. When a boy, GSS1, was looking for escape, there's no manifestation I didn't see. Open the door! Yeah! The doctor is captured. Your children are not dealing with normal people. They are watching some things you think is moving. It's conduit pipe for demons. So when God called us into a relationship of marriage, like I read from 1 Corinthians 2, we teach you, some of you were here earlier, you heard the teaching. We will teach. But there's what teaching comes of. The might of the Lord. You are here now. Your children are not with you now. But there's a God. <laughs> He's limitless. That's why fear can't have us. What will happen to them? Ah! What will happen to them is determined by Elohim. The boy began to run everywhere. Running mad. Open the door. Ah, I said, God made your case easy. Bring him here. You foul spirit. Get out of here. So the devil came and gummed my body one growing condition that went on for years. Until I said, con contention must end here. You want to kill me? Let's worship Jesus. So I'm going to pray with those.
the people I talked about, you can come out now, please.
those we sing on, all, all the volunteers, come and collect blessing. Come and collect blessing, one by one. It's blessing time, blessing, blessing. Collect. You know what collect? I be people where I get this kind of style. <laughs> Chimde has been particularly very wonderful. Chidi Mai shouting for a reason. Shout, 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 shout. Do you have a girlfriend? Not yet. <laughs> it's cute, man. Turn around, turn around. Even people online. See, his name is Chimdi. <laughs> They're cute, too. So, I'm supposed to ask, answer questions. Then we enter spirit. But it's better to follow spirit than to follow. <laughs> Do you have questions for me? Okay. So, so that I can catch my breath, yeah? Then answer a few questions uh, today. Charles will come and sing a song. Then I will sit down. Then I will answer questions. Meanwhile, my brother... <laughs> see, sir, I didn't know you were the mayor of London. <laughs> Please, w welcome Ayo forward first. Welcome Ayo, welcome Ayo. If you don't follow this man and his wife, you don't know anything. If you have to choose one person to follow between me and him, follow him. <laughs> Welcome, sir. We, we spoke um, just yesterday, and I had committed a sin. I didn't, you know, I didn't really call him up straight up to talk about this. And uh, he forgave me my sins. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, um, we're so glad. He told me he will reach here today like this. And I'm so glad. Um, they even did a giveaway to give out some tickets. And Praise God. I'm having such a great time in London. Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, we're coming back. All this one. All this one. It's, not, it's not hit and run. We're coming back. 
We like going back to places because we do not lie. Because when we come, there will be testimonies. Come again, testimonies. Come again. That's how we started going to Lagos. We are going to Lagos. Hmm? Everywhere we don't go, they go. They go back. No, they fear. Praise God. Amen. So, go a little time. Um, Charles has disappeared, though. No, I, I trust my salvation, so I know it's not rapto. <laughs> I trust my salvation. You know, and I, I, we, we got, um, you know, friends, family here. I can see the antinoma. I can see the antinoma. You see, you know, when you, when you greet some people, you've seen the partiality of the people who shout. Are the people connected to that stream? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Is is partiality. Okay, since Charles is not here, um, who is going first? See, they say we're in London, that anything you do and you beat time, you pay. So don't do that thing people used to do. They'll not ask questions. When one person asks questions, now see 15 people. I have questions. Praise God. So um, where's our mic for questions? Chidima, the way you said, why do I always do this? That means you were the one waiting for me to. Are you the one that was waiting to ask questions? No, just a, I ask a question if you have a question to ask when you shouted that. How do I do what? Okay, how do I do this? Okay, thank you. It's a good question to start with. Because I am a practicing lawyer. And a practicing husband. A practicing father. All right, to be honest, um, I always say to people, honestly, that the problem with a lot of Christians is they compartmentalize a single life. So people want to ask about your professional life from your spiritual life to your family life. The moment you begin to compartmentalize it in that sense, you lose the capacity to manage it because there will be too many. Honest truth. Okay, let me give you an example. In March, we were in Kenya, and it was a very short trip. Oh, yeah, I write the question and pass it. Eh? Okay. It's good to have brothers that have sense. So that our... Oh, <laughs> when we were in Chidima's house yesterday, Chidima claimed that she's the quietest person in the world. Can you imagine? So, eh uh-huh. The very number that was our contact number for this program, just leave the message there and we shall answer it. So, I get this question all the time. Particularly, okay, for context, I actually manage my own law practice, so it's quite intense. I was going to talk about Kenya. So, we did a trip to Kenya to minister and it was across what they call two days, 48 hours, man. 48 to 72 hours, because, okay, we left Nigeria for Friday, got in early hours of Saturday, no, Thursday, got in early hours of Friday, did the meeting Saturday, got out that Saturday back in Nigeria on Sunday. But in that time, I had Zoom meeting in Nigeria, Zoom meeting on arrival with a UK-based client in Kenya, then back in Nigeria. People carry themselves, my professional life. In fact, that's why people are not spiritual because they want to have a spiritual life. I have friends and ministry partners today that became ministry partner while I was interviewing them for a job. Shea speaks about this publicly, so let me give you one public example. Shea Aro Shebe, my professional colleague. At the time, I was working fully in my dad's office, and we had this group of people who came for interview. Now, me be interviewer. The rules cannot go against me. What I'm about to say is not unethical. So, I banter with you because I have the right to. Oh, you're single like I was doing with Chimdi. He told me marriage is still... I said, that's not what I see. <laughs> you don't go law interview where they see vision for your head. I gave him my book, Help, I Am In Love. He got the job, he got a book. The way he and his wife, he may be watching, the way, he may send support for this book. The way he and the wife, they follow our ministry. Do you get what I mean? Why? My life is one life. I don't leave my anointing at home when I go to the job. 
See, let me tell you, including your lawyer, a lot of lawyers watch Netflix a lot. I don't have Netflix subscription. I have Holy Spirit subscription. So when I'm not doing law, I close my door in my office. I tell my colleagues, excuse me. Why? On more occasions than not in Nigeria, I leave office to ministration. How can people invite me to come and minister and I come here empty? I mean, I left court. I was in court. Came back to office. Ended up in your church. So I can't say this is... All those things that people do. You kiss your wife goodbye in the morning. The next time you see in the night. Because you are busy. The marriage was never suspended. There's WhatsApp. There's video call. No, text is dry. Text, you can't express yourself. Like I tell married people, if I take the chat between you and your wife and there's nothing steaming, where are you steaming this steam? Where are you steaming because let me tell you, steam has to happen. Yes, so I need to steam in the right direction. You know me, I don't know how to lie. Let me confess one confession. So one afternoon, I was busy. My wife called me. Maybe I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Then one girl now sent me a message. Sir, how are you doing? I now answered the message kindly. I picked my phone and called my wife. I said, you just offended. You shot one out. The other one said, how are you doing? You are excited. I said, this excitement is a sin. So I picked my phone. I said, baby, one girl sent me a message. I was excited about it after shutting you out. Can we talk? I'm free. You would think it's a joke. It's contention. It's contention. So what just happened? You're on the job and still married. Let me tell you how you know that your life is not compartmentalized. There are calls you don't want to see as a parent from your children's school midday. It's not closing time. You can't be too busy. You can't be busy. You will excuse yourself. What happened? What happened? Not because you are afraid, but because you are responsible. So, you need to. So, I, I give you a very straight example. I sleep late. So, I sleep late <laughs> into the morning. Julia does school runs. So, I have to structure my life. My brother was having me yesterday. I carry two phones. I say, one is ministry. I tell people. If I give you our RM line, you either run mad or run to God because you see everything human beings should not hear. All right? So I heard from a very senior lawyer, he used to be Attorney General of the Federation in Nigeria. He gave me as an advice, and I took it on, and that's how I take it into my life to have a balanced life. He said to me, If you don't know where your practice stops, you will become a monster. And I got his point because I was once in court, for instance, when I was practicing in Benway, waiting for my martyr, and a charge was read to an accused who had used a pistol, the one for pounding. You have a pounding machine, you don't know. Mortar and pistol. Yeah. He used the pistol to kill his mom by smashing her on the head, his mother. When the charge was read, I sat there wondering what this son will say. Stone cold, straight face to the judge, guilty. The guy was just looking at the judge like nothing happened. So I got Chief Kano at this point. He's like, you must learn the transition. So yeah, why? Let me use this particular example. You would have seen so much tears as a lawyer that your wife's tears will soon be discounted. Tears. Who tears the key? Do you get what I mean? What is the constant in my professional life, in my ministry life, in my family life, the presence and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, one reality will corrupt another reality. So I tell people, see, I read books, I listen to teachings, but the greatest factor in my life is the Holy Spirit. He's the one who creates balance. So, you're sitting in court. Uh, I'll give you another example. Let me enter professional life. So I was sitting in court, involved in this matter, high-profile matter, one particular witness had covered our side. God so kind. I'm, I was fought in line to cross-examine him. This man was having a field day with us. The witness said the control lawyers. He was, ha! He was just evasive doing everything. Holy Spirit, come. Oh. This matter. <laughs> this matter requires urgent attention. 
This guy wants to embarrass both my professional life and my calling. <laughs> when I was done with that guy, when he was leaving the court, say you. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? So, the balance is, and this is what will save you. For this time, my profession, they carry conference material. Do you know what conference material is? Okay. People go for conference with attachments. What God has not joined together. So, sh- <laughs> what will detach you from the attachments that is common? The presence. So, don't compartmentalize. See, your real life is actually your spiritual life. Every other thing is a part on the journey. So, see, let's be frank. Let's be frank. Who doesn't do everything in this life? Do you have Facebook? Do you have Instagram? Do you add Twitter to it? But you have the account, sir. You have TikTok. <laughs> you have WhatsApp. Oh, you have WhatsApp, sir. What about Telegram? <laughs> How are you doing it? How do you do it? But I, I, I conclude this answer with something. Because you are going to be multifaceted in life to fulfill all your calling in life, you must learn the order of priority of your life. I'll give you an example. Nobody seated in this room, alive or dead, including my beloved mother, is as important as my wife and will ever be. Not even the calling of God upon my life. Ha, me and my brother had a big one about this thing. Why? The first calling of God upon my life is actually my wife. So in the New Testament church, the apostles asked you for your family credentials before they give you leadership. Hey, can, I see your, can I see how you are doing it? Can I see how you are managing the situation? So when you come into the other priority, and now you don't also just choose your priority, you ask God to help you. Because there are things that must come before other things. Final example. I was somewhere ministering and I lost a deal. And I used it to negotiate with the Lord. Now, if you know how we run ministry, nobody invites me and I charge you a fee to come and minister for you. So, I'm going to give the details. Where we were ministering, we were giving an appreciation that simply covered the transportation we used to do that travel. Let me tell you how much he covered it. The guy we hired to carry us, stay with us, and bring us back, the appreciation we were giving was exactly the fee we paid him. Not any of the other attachments we spent, forget it. But I was preaching... My phone was silenced with my wife when somebody called just needing the firm account number. He's caught a deal. He needs a firm account number to partner with. My share was very, very clear. When I called him back later, deal gone. Good morning. So I went back to the Lord. It's not your fault. It's that I was not with my phone. But you know how we are doing it. <laughs> Praise God. And God doesn't owe any man. Why? He's the one who ordered this priority. And when Satan wants to lie to you, you may not be preaching but can still miss a call. So, the order of priority is not about profit and loss. It is that you know that based on your calling in life, I should be doing this as a matter of priority. So, the Lord will guide your heart to that so that you make sure you are creating balance. Because... Jack of all trade, master of none, is not God's style. There are many things we are capable of, but that we should never do. Very capable of it, but it's not my focus. So I don't focus on it. But if you let your abilities lead you, you will fail. That's why, are you able to have multiple partners? Yes, now. Should you? No, now. Because it's not what? Priority. Or, speaking as a child of God, it's not correct. Do you get what I mean? Have we got another question now? Ah, there are no questions in London, so what are you talking about? Who is getting the message so that we can or oh, there's a live question. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, who's with the phone? Chichi. Is that the famous daughter of the famous author? Praise God. Praise God. Oh, they got some. I see my dear sister. All right. You may want to see her at the end of this title. Ocholi Okutepa cannot remember here now. But we once did um, a series based on her book on her page, and I mean, it was great. Yeah. Which gauge did she use to gauge it? Um, I get this question a lot also, but this is the issue. The issue with that question is very often, you may be louder but not deeper. What's the gauge of spiritual maturity? The capacity to be led. So I may not shout like you, but is my life aligned to God? If this man fears the Lord, this man is led by the Lord. This man regards God in every way. For instance, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. If that man does that, your tongue may be loud, louder. Maybe because your pitch is higher. <laughs> then him is going, zata, zata, zata. Please, after his zata, is he led? Does he fear God? Is he, and I add one, is he in an active Bible believing church where he taught the real word of God? Because some people now they look normal, but the person they are following, where they are taking them is, is ditch. Mm, I have to say to it's my constituency, so I have to confess. In this generation, there are men of God that are not to be followed. And it's not me that will come and give you a list of who to follow. The son, Bible says, test all spirit, including me, test me. Did you test me? If you did not test me, you are taking risk. Oh. In, ca in case it's African voodoo, I brought it. <laughs> oh, God. That testing thing, though. Praise God. So, uh, be careful because a lot of ladies have rejected men. See, let me tell you. Not everybody who hold mic can be on the pulpit. Some people will just be ushering. It's fine. Some people will just be sweeping church. It's fine. In fact, some people, their own financial contribution. If you don't believe in people that give financial contribution, come and talk to me. You know how much you spend to be here? Money. Ego. Real money. Do you understand? Or it is somebody who give money and not bless him. Say, my son, need that <laughs> Your service has been accepted. <laughs> Praise God. Have we got another one? Chidima. Have you got another one? Okay, go ahead. I know. Okay. okay. What's your advice to the man who just to marry the lady who is left the marriage for the parents are not to support and has prayed about Active words led. The fact that God leads does not mean you don't meet opposition. Second thing is he has prayed about it. Now that last part is a religious statement. Because if I prayed about it, Prayer is not talking to God. Prayer is talking to God and waiting for an answer. That man needs to go back and pray and get direction. What do I do? All right? So, and that's why we accuse God a lot. Big accusation. You know, anytime people come to me to complain, they always explain that they have prayed. So he needs to go back to prayer. But here's the deal. He needs to also take wisdom steps. Subject to what the Lord will say to him, I'll give you some examples. A lot of people make the mistake of getting confrontational with that parent and that's a problem. Because if you are looking for battle, some parents are ready for you. If it's battle. So, first thing, he needs to go back to pray. And what is he praying about? Let me be specific because sometimes people don't know what to pray. Alright? Number one, he should go back and retest his hearing. Was I truly led to this matter? Because God can use your parents, even the one that is not born again, to shock you into direction. 
I mean, it may look hard, but God can use a parent, even the one that doesn't fear the Lord, to hold a journey that should not be. If you clarify in the place of prayer that yes, I'm on the right path, and who is wrong is the parent, what do I do next? Set of prayer. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord, so I begin to pray for them, for God to be able to stir their hearts. Number two, I begin to pray for divine strategies to approach them. Because very often when God begins to move, it takes a man cooperating to do something that will perfect the move of the Lord. So I'm praying for them for the stirring. I'm praying for me for wisdom. Why am I praying for wisdom? First, um, James chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Does any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask God, who will not rebuke him for asking, but will give him wisdom without condemning him or without rebuking him. So at that point, I'm asking for wisdom. And I'll give you some strategy, for example. Simple strategy. Confrontation with parents, leave it. It will never work. You end up apologizing. You may have people who they defer to who can speak to them the way you can't. Most families have at least one person like that. Go to somebody close by. Number two. Do not insist to somebody to believe you when you have not heard them. Go and meet your parents and say, Daddy, actually, I know you said a few things about this. Thing. Um, frankly, I want to understand you. This thing I'm telling you has got some parents talk. Because this parent claims to be a Christian, goes to church, has been teaching you the way of the Lord, but the only problem he has is that the person who is coming is Yoruba. And they don't understand that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek. So what are you doing by saying, I want to just hear you, daddy. Straight, just straight I want to just hear you. I, I, some parents got stuck here. Because, let me tell you, me, I faced resistance from the opposite side. Let me tell you what I did. So, mommy may be watching because daddy was online earlier. My parents in love. Mommy spoke with me for one hour. In fact, this you in London has been causing problems in 1980-something. Mommy said, the person that will marry her daughter is in London. And there was actually somebody that was interested. The daughter Guma was not interested. Then I figured that mommy fears the Lord. This conversation went on one hour. My wife and her sisters were behind cutting. It was a friendly gist that was getting tough. You know when you come to somebody's house, they first of all make them serve you food and drink. <laughs> then, then begin to resist you. <laughs> So when she was done over and over, I said, Mommy, if this is the will of God, would you fight it? She said, let's go and pray about it. Because I feel God, fear of God lives in that family. So when she was done, I said, Mommy, if this is the will of God, would you fight it? I didn't have answer. I only had question. She said, we should go and pray about it. That's the last we had argument. Her daughter is in my house, 11 years plus. I collected her. So wisdom will come. <laughs> the guy to collect that back now, that three children. <laughs> Everything has every changed. <laughs> Praise God. The next question, please. Okay, thank you so much. Next question. What do you do when your partner is not believing the son as he ought? And you are now finally speaking of two. Even when you talk about it, you take it serious for some time, then back to old ways. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not alone your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him. This person is trying to contend in the flesh. The reason why he doesn't last is that you did, you did the job of getting him up to respond. See, I thought a message about soul and spouse. A lot of people are demanding a spouse whose soul cannot bring them to the point of demand. So I leave the spouse alone. Lord, you and I know that my wife doesn't have sense right now. And the reason she doesn't have sense is because she's not submitted to you. I cannot convict, but you can. It's called intercession. 
Intercession does three things. Let me explain quickly. Intercession number one suspends judgment. Because when your spouse begins to go that way, they get exposed. A lot of people don't know that. You are fighting a person who is exposed. You are just helping Satan finish them. They are exposed. You are even speaking of a man. That means the cover of the home is being tampered. So the first thing it does is to suspend judgment. Because why? If you break the hedge, the Bible says the serpent will strike. Number two thing it does is interception now happens. Judgment has been suspended. God begins to orchestrate events to intercept the man. Ah, they were stoning Stephen. Rather than Stephen cursing at them, he spoke the same words that Jesus spoke on the cross. Say, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. What happened? They were casting their lots and clothes or whatever at the feet of a man named Saul. God heard on his way to Damascus, he said, it is time to stop this one. Interception. Let me tell you how God has intercepted some people's husbands and wives. Do you know our son were teaching? By the leading of the spirit, I just told men to hug their wives and play some music. They should just stay there, hug, dance. A man began to cry. God wanted to do something else in the marriage. And this is what he said. Affection is not his thing. This marriage was not a young marriage. He gave me the history of how affection was not his matter. How can it be a couple of years married and make you hug and stay with your wife? And something breaks. For some people, simple matter, a book will fall in their hand. A friend will come into their life. But the problem is, when we begin to intercede, we want to see things shake immediately. I stayed there. Somebody is going to come into his life. One day, they will just mistakenly enter YouTube. One black man called Ochili will just be speaking. And he will be saying to them, go back home. Like I've seen happen a couple of times. Go back home. Go back home. And somebody is standing up and coming under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Stop this nonsense you are doing. Stand up. Get back. God begins to intercept them. The third thing intercession does is it releases grace for them to function in that new dimension. Because here's the deal. Minus grace, you give up. So sometimes they are genuinely repenting. Somebody sang, you saved me, gave me a second chance, but was recently convicted. If you know the person's history, he struggled with repentance for so long. You could see that God had his hand on him repeatedly. Perhaps somebody needed to pray. Perhaps grace needed to be released from somewhere. Let me tell you, stop fighting a person you are not praying for. Married people, stop fighting a spouse you are not upholding. This one go hard. I learned on the day, but go talk him. I yes, you no go attend next year, but you attend in Jesus' name. But see what will happen. You don't have a right to a spouse you did not receive in prayer. You don't have a right to a spouse you did not receive in prayer. All those things you are complaining about, turn it to prayer. Begin to pray them into that reality. So many times we are confronting and fighting. Next question. Thank you. Does it? If you age, she's older than me. It's just that people don't have sense. That's the problem. <laughs> if people have sense, for instance, when I met my wife, they had lied to her. Julia was looking for somebody 10 years. A lot of things are issues of personal confusion, not revelation. I'm only 11 months older than my wife. She was looking for 10 years. Because she thought that people too close to her would not have sense. Me, I came with sense. And I was just 19, going 20. Sometimes, especially from ladies, they ask that question because they feel, no, before the older one, they feel it's easier to defer to a man that is way older. So you see people say, ah, come marry from my class. Everybody in my class is a boy. That's why they told me that this thing that is doing me with July to end. That to end in the gate of school. She sits at my house right now. Three children. The thing didn't end. Because that conclusion itself is not valid. When it comes to the age issue, if I this is the one that used to annoy me. You saw somebody, two of you liked each other. A number did not appear on their head. Until you people arrived at the number, you now decide, ah, you have been seeing me. 
we have been talking, we have been coordinating, we have been able to like each other, we have been able to, all of that was going on until number got on the table. Don't you think you have a problem? However, however, practically now, you have finished liking him, liking her. And the parameters of the number can cause actual problems. A real actual one. Like generational problem. This guy, your thinking is in 1972 when I'm in 2022. Then we can start having the conversation of I actually love you. Now, this thing has left number. It has entered the practicality of how it will work. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because let me say this is every sense of responsibility. It's not every relationship that starts that must finish. And there are many reasons why it can end. So I just realized that that liking that I like to is a foolish liking. When the facts get on the table, I'm a mumu. So I hereby carry, <laughs> I carry my mumu liking and go away. Based on the details, an assumption can be too costly. Jesus' parents wasted time because of assumption. They left Jerusalem. The Bible said they assumed he was in the company. But those guys were reckless. Three days. A 12-year-old. After three days. Where's our son? They traveled three days back. Six days down. To find him. Then traveled three days to get to where they realized. Nine days for a three days journey. Do not allow your emotion go above your decision. So as the emotion is doing you. Sit down and begin to look at the facts. That's why early enough, if number is your problem, know the number. You start to know it. Oh, my 20th birthday is next week. Because I tell people to offer their age so that people can offer their own. Don't ask how old are you. Oh, I just had my 30th birthday last week. You have taken away the defenses. The person is already aware. Because I've met too many people too. They have gone too far before they are looking at number. So if number matters to you, it should come early in the come. I didn't say, will you marry me if I'm 10? Mm -mm. Just, uh -huh, auntie. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Three in one. God is not the author of confusion. There are many godly people in church. Wait, wait, let's finish that one. God is not the author of confusion. Marriage is an intensively sexual relationship. Marriage is intensively sexual. If we had a child for every time I slept with Julia, I can populate London. All the children here, close your ears in Jesus. I can't be coming to my wife in faith. Father, help me right now to be attracted. Hey! It's a different ball game when change begins to happen. And I don't lie to people about it. When Julia was done with three children, she has gained over 25 kg. Different ball game. Different ball game. And she began, she began to even try me. She was inviting me to help her complain. I refused. Never tell a woman that she doesn't look good. Every woman has body insecurity. The one that is on the big side want to reduce. The one that is reduced want to increase. They don't even know where they are. Every woman has a target. Every woman has a cloth that will fit into the size they are aiming for. So she tell me, baby, I can't feel the scale. I say, forget the scale. My eyes are good. She will climb the scale after much exercise. She say, baby, baby. I say, that scale is a liar. <laughs> Why? She was inviting that trouble. So that when I agree with you, that's in my house. <laughs> Me, I resisted the temptation. If I go to the bar, I say, baby, when I hold you, I know what I hold. So you are making progress more than you know. <laughs> Do you understand? But inside my heart, I was waiting, God, help her, help her, help her. <laughs> that Jimmy, help her. Let it go down small, small, just small. Small, small, small. small. <laughs> but when she comes to me, hmm, ah, baby, ah, ah. If I wonder, one, th one time I told her, look, I'm not like those other people. I want to marry who when I hold, I know I'm holding something. <laughs> Wisdom is profitable to direct. <laughs> 
20 is a lot too. It's not, it's, it's not going to be easy. Uh, now, um, 20 is a lot, but whatever we say is subject to more than what we say. You got times and seasons in your hands. All right? Now, let me give you an example. 20 is like three generations, not even two. It's like three. See, to think, to, to come to what lawyers call consensus I did then for the minds to meet. So it's not like it's not possible, but you have more work. And guess what? The more the gap in generation, not just number, the more they work to meet. So don't expect that one to be excited about the things you are excited about. So you are going to have to reduce excitement and not demand every excitement. So not that it can't work, but are you ready to pay the price like we say in Christendom? <laughs> it's a price. So he's sitting with his friends and they're coming, our daughter. No, I'm not your daughter, I'm your wife. Do you, are you understand what I'm saying? Do you, then for every situation where the lady is older, there's something we must note. There must be two securities on the table for it to work. Number one, in fact, Julia had to pass one of that test because she had her sights on large age difference and I came with 11 months. So the test she needed to pass is, can I respect this man by default? Do you get what I mean? Number two test is by the man. Can I not regard the age here? Let me be honest with you. I know Julia is watching and I'm about to say, it's not a lie. I actually see Julia sometimes like my daughter. I'm being honest. Not demeaning, not insulting, but I don't have any insecurity around Julia. Leading Julia is just it's normal. So she comes with the security of, see, I'll tell you, we have had a normal couple thing, but I do not know anybody in my lifetime that defers to regard, respect, and honor me like Julia has done in life. So the 11 months is nothing. It doesn't count. So if, even if she's only half a year older, if these two securities are not on the table, before you know it, and by the way, when I married Julia, her salary was exactly 10 times my salary. So age didn't help me, money didn't help me. <laughs> and all she told me was simple. All she kept saying is that she knows the future we are crafting. Because I married two months after my NYC. I'm not afraid to say my father may be watching too. I married through crowdfunding. If my father didn't pay for the wedding, it won't go happen. By the way, it's him I was working for, so that salary was his responsibility. <laughs> if I went, me and him had some issue and I got angry about it, my pastor's wife started me down and said, if your father doesn't marry for who will marry for you? You're a first child, first son. Are you crazy? My friend, go and respect yourself. I went by humble myself. We will do list. We'll be discussing the list, but we'll know who's paying. <laughs> Paid the first rent, did the first furnishing. Do you see my problem? Father is funding, wife is funding. Where do we go to? <laughs> but trust me, no shaking in my heart. And it's only an irresponsible man in that position that will now say, wife, feed me. Wife, feed me. Mumu, go and walk. Go and walk. If I set that as minimum target, number one, you have to solve this inequality. <laughs> Let's get you. I know why the question is coming. I know. Oh. Okay, Pastor Chin talks a very, very, very long time, friends. Friend, we all did ministry together in ABU. We have been close since then, till now. Mm. I know it reflects in certain ways of speaking, certain songs. I know. Don't worry. Mm. I know. Um, don't worry. We even spoke before I came here last week, so don't worry. But is that supposed to be a question? <laughs> I mean, it's possible because they probably see what they see again and see what they see in the future and see what they see in the future and see what they see in the future. Thank you for that. Last question. You say last question the last time. Okay, no problem. Let me try. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's run now. Yeah. And I know the story of a lady who, 
after praying through on certain marital release prayer, a guy who had been aiming to ask her for many years told her the truth. Every time I came close to you, I saw the face of a lion uh, until she dealt with the matter in prayer. You know, that's why I said a lot of times the devil masks his activity through civilization. So there are certain things they say, you just think that's one Nigerian church talking like that. No, it's not Nigerian church. Satan is really in London too, all right? Witches and wizards exist here too, all right? So if you are very certain you heard the Lord, tell the Lord that gates of brass and iron, hmm? shatter it. And just in case they are doing it from where you are from, the spirit, there's no distance. Uh, just break the calabash. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that now. Chidima, send me a message. Send me a message. Send me a message about time. No. I don't want us to be so good because you pay an extra hour. Send me a message about time. Are we good with no extra payment after 4 o'clock? Okay, then we'll wrap up. Thank you. I just said the Hebrew, we spend money. If you want to give us pounds today, we'll collect it. A lot of money was spent. No, no, the last one you asked about demonic. Now, that's why we must stay, we must stay discerning. Let, 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 me, let me say this here. There are certain breakups that are not normal. Just the way certain breaks up, breakups are breakthrough. I'll give you an example. I have seen this more than once. In fact, the Stevens shared this publicly so I can say it. Um, they, they've been friends with us and been serving along with us. They're teaching our premarital class. So, they were both single, single when they joined serving with us, 2015, 2016. In fact, at the point they were looking elsewhere, they found themselves. They began to take the journey. One, two, one, two, ah, ah. They said they are not doing it again. Thank God for the spirit of authority. So, Julia and I called them to the house. We spoke to him separately, spoke to her separately, and discerned that it was a relational issue, not a foundational issue. But they are going their separate ways. Purpose is supposed to be fulfilled here. We didn't command, we can't command you to make a choice. So we told them separately. What we see here is a relational issue. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And left them. You know, sometimes people come to you only when there's a problem. It was months later after they were fully back that we heard. How ah, we now foretell us more do the ceremony together now. They are married now with a son. Living such a purposeful life. So what happened there is if they or those of us involved in their life were not discerning enough to call out what was going on. A purposeful relationship with that God would have been lost. Do you get what I'm saying? So we must stay discerning to know that this one is a fixable issue. This is not so foundational that I have to go. Praise God. The problem with a lot of Christians is that they are looking for confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation upon confirmation. I saw no vision about Julia personally speaking, for instance. I simply had peace in my heart, and peace is the primary way by which God leads me. If my spirit is active. And my spirit was active, no issues, no problem. You have listed such long lists. What are you looking for? Why if they marry you, you are looking for confirmation. Okay, what you do, eh? go to London Bridge in the night by 12 midnight. They say, Lord, if it is you, let the bridge shake like this. <laughs> if the bridge does not shake, go back. Don't marry her. All you have said is enough. You have peace in your heart. Just go through a wisdom process. What's the wisdom process? Is she interested in you? After she gets interested in you, can you guys take a class, a seminar? Can you submit to your mentors and listen to wisdom? Can you be guided? Once you go through all of that, I mean... You're doing well. Anti victory. Any more? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Clap, clap. It's good to clap. Hallelujah. Okay, let's take one. Please, can I give her the mic for the sake of them? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, how do you become 
How do you be what? Helpful. I love that question because no group of girls get hot like very kind girls. Empathetic. Kind. Help me now, wife, no be babe. That is why some boys will chop your money and bring wedding card from somebody else. If you don't know what to do with it, RM spends a lot of money. If you know how many million we have spent this year doing hangout, you will give me the money. Hold your money tight. There's what I call test in dating, test in courtship, then even in the final phase of courtship. When you are relating, allow facts to reveal people. When you marry me, you will own me and my money the way I will own you and your money. But can I not put... See, I tell people, sometimes, play coming to America. What did Eddie Murphy do in that movie? He left his estate and went to America. There are certain things that should not become a factor until the person is trusted. A lot of guys are looking for girls to feed them even in London, though. Hallelujah. I'm not done. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do? Learn to relate on the basic. And until there's a commitment with a person, treat them like any other person. So if, I'm, if what I'm giving you, I can't give to another brother in church. Sorry. So I'll treat you as everybody until you become somebody. Do you get what I mean? Even after you become somebody, <laughs> let me tell you, rather than have a 100K lying about, because there are people, they were not bad until you tempted them with your words. You began to tempt them to be reckless because you put something on the table. So if I have a 100K lying, I'll invest it somewhere. So what I have is investment, not cash. I know a man Right now, okay, I don't know him personally. A client of mine is his friend. He said for years, the guy always was broke. Years, he was always broke. Anytime I meet him, we're managing. He's retired now and grossing in Naira around 12 million yearly from properties. All those years of I'm broke, I'm broke. He was investing in properties. You can never meet him with money. He himself was living on like a tight rope. He's now retired. See money from his properties. Do you understand? So you don't also, there's a way you present yourself. You present yourself in a way that somebody can take advantage of. Do you get what I mean? So keep it simple. Relationship is not for funding anybody's life. It's for relating. Chidema, yeah. have they chopped your money? Have they chopped your money before? Go and read my book, Knowing God's Will for Marriage, where I explain visions, trances, parents, prophet, pastor, audible voice, inner voice, and all. This person is in a confused place because they do not understand the disposition of their heart, whether it's a spiritual leading or an attack from village. Because something good can be in front of you and your village people will start doing you. Start making you... Do you get what I mean? Now, to top it up, the reason you know a spirit is involved here, the spirit of fear is now getting involved. What if I lose this one and I'm losing something good? This person needs to go back in the place of prayer. 
All right? And ask the Lord to help them be discerning. Because until they are discerning, they can't cross this bridge. All right? Nobody can answer the question this person asks except the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that will bring you to the point to say, look, I'm the one giving you a check. Or that feeling, because your feelings are not trustable. They are fickle. Feelings change. Just like some people here now, the way you are feeling, I know if I send you 1,000 pounds in your account right now, you will react. They are already reacting. They are reacting. <laughs> That's feelings. It's fickle. Charisma, the way you are smiling is like... Uh, it's like 7,000 pounds and you can like it now for shopping. Just, take, just keep it. The Bible says in the motto of counsel there is safety. Why are you running away from being guided? It's so simple. Why should I be afraid of being guided? To be honest, I'm so grateful for the voices in my life. A few weeks ago, my father and Lord called me to see him. I called my wife. I, I don't even know why that happened. Like it had been a long while I felt that way. I called Julia. I was, I was headed there. I was, I was on call with Julia. I'm like, I'm scanning my life. Did somebody report me for something? <laughs> I just, to be honest, like, of course, there was nothing. I went there. We had a normal meeting, but it's just a check. I am tired of counseling, especially women, who when they sit in front of me and I ask, who is a voice in your marriage that can call your husband to order and there's none? It's a very bad place. Very bad place. So that liberty you think he has that you are happy about turns a man to him, especially men, to a monster. Because some people come to me and I'm like, look, the solution, I can only counsel you into patience, grace, prayer, and a few survivor skills. But the intervention your spouse needs will come to a person who can call them and sit with them. Yes. How long do you have to wait before committing to a relationship with someone? One second. It's, um, now, the, the problem with that is that people think that commitment automatically means you are hitched and that's it. Stage number one is normal relating. Stage number one leads you to the assumption that this person may be good. Then the person asks you out. On semi-assumption, based on what you can see, he goes to church, she does this, she does that, you see her virtue, blah, blah, blah. You commence the first stage, which is dating you. You are talking. Then this person, you will relate to the point, this person now proposes to you. By this time, assumption has met facts. That's if all you were doing was not just to eat pizza and burger, you have been having conversation, you have been watchful, you have been discerning. Then you say, hmm, Based on this time, I can commit. There's no time frame to read. But also, I don't believe people should be doing it forever. Like some people meet me. You had breakup after 10 years. I say it's divorce. It's not breakup. Why are you doing 10 years? 10 years can contain four children. Okay. What have you doing? So, if you are taking that long to commit, you are not ready to commit. When they cross into courtship, courtship is the phase where I have matched the assumption and the facts. I'm ready to go on to marriage. But even courtship is breakable. If something shows up that disproves all the facts I've confirmed, you do not lie, you do not fail. What is, nothing is hard. Final question, or we are done? Oh, yes. It's what? I love this. Just be authentic, but don't be overbearing on your, yourself. Some people cross their own lines. I'll give you an example. And I tell ladies especially to do this. A guy is canopying you, hanging around you, not allowing rain and sun to fall on you, but not falling on you. What did you call it? Umbrella. Umbrella. I've told people several times, you know what you do? Start reading messages and not replying. When the person begins to para, you know what para is in Nigeria? To talk cha-cha-cha. 
You ask them, what are we? I miss your call. I don't call back. For three days. On the fourth day, I pick up. Oh, sorry, I saw a missed call. I was busy. You have sent the message to say we are nothing. Just in case you were thinking we were something. I actually just gave you notice that we are nothing. Do you get what I'm saying? So, you need to, see, you see your emotions, you can't trust it. I give you anybody to consistently chat you for one week. You start feeling things you have not felt before. It's an activation, not a spiritual one. It's an emotional activation. It doesn't even matter their status, married, single, dating, no, just because attention is how you build affection. So, what do you do? Save yourself, carry yourself out of that space. Because the reason why you're feeling win, 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 you know, win, 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 win. And let me quickly say this. Anybody you have to chat every day to be happy, whether you are doing something or not, you are doing it. You're already inside. Praise God. Last question, I promise. I promise. Yes. Promise is taken. Let me clarify. It looks very simple, but let me clarify. Let me clarify. It's deeper than what was asked. See, everywhere we go, we have this question, and people just assume, we should know now. No, we should not know. The man just sent a signal deeper than I want to sleep with you. Let me tell you the signal. Very simple signal. Everything I knew about your salvation, you just brought it under test. Let me tell you something. I, I say this to single people, but it can seem hard on the flesh, but it's the truth. Fornication is actually adultery rehearsed. Why is it adultery rehearsed? And rehearsed with the strongest person there is. So people tell me, by the way, we are getting married. Oh, that's true. You can even go on to get married. But, let me use, please come, uh, show. Iman has escaped this one. I don't even know where he's okay. See him. Relationship is an activation of the laws on which the marriage will run. My sleeping with you is not a problem. Sex is a very simple thing. Very cheap. Can if somebody told me a story, finish sleeping with one girl before I asked her, what's your name again? Yeah. This relationship lays the mark for the marriage. Yes, we are getting married. It's even about to happen. See what happens when I have sex here. I cannot honor God when I am sexually activated. That's the first statement you just made. So the man just took himself back to square one, even if I've been dating for three years. Like, excuse me? The thing that is normal about sexual relation in a dating relationship or courtship relationship is that if sexual relationship is not a temptation, two of you are not even compatible. That means two of us can create fire for each other. That's why we survive more on boundaries than strength. If we're inside the same room, we'll go do. We'll be, and I heard the story of some people, real life story. They did three days fasting, prayed, so that they'll stop fornicating their relationship. As they broke the fast, they had sex. Why? They were in the same room. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Don't stay there. So the other time, me and my friend were talking. I was in South Africa alone, just like here alone. And my friend was just having me. The windows, based on one of their skits that they, uh, movies that they produced. Say, so hope there's no sin here in that room. I say, by the grace of God, my joy is that no woman has stepped in this room, either righteously or unrighteously. I am really alone. Do you understand what I say? Before is that moment. You know, some sisters are not bad. It's just that the period they met you, they were ovulating. So they are... So their gauge is lower. Not that they are generally bad. <laughs> you people came for hangout now. I should lie. That's why I say flee. You are standing there. Rakatagabasheta. 
your tongues will be drained like heat wave. <laughs> so number one, you have said it is okay to dishonor God when I am tempted. Number two, she I'm in London alone. I came in on Monday, I'm leaving next Wednesday. If I want to do anything, even my team members are not going to. So Joseph said, can I do this against God? So it's an activation. Alright? And trust me, life will give you more opportunities to activate if you want to activate. Number two, and the final thing I'll say, this is the person with, with whom to practice the greatest strength because this is the one you actually want. If you can manage to practice the strength here, you have gained points. God bless you. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are so grateful. Um, everybody that made this happen, that's why I made sure we said the prayer over you in the corporate atmosphere. But trust me, these guys have been, I, I'll just say this and we'll pray and close. And for all our partners who are also watching, thank you for committing your funds to make sure we're able to do this. Then for every one of us who got tickets, um, you helped us do this because um, a lot of times people don't know how much goes into uh, doing these things when we do. I can say by the grace of God that we did not have to spend um, here because the guys here spent here, all right? What we had to do as a ministry was my flight, my accommodation, uh, but venue, sound, light, blah, blah, everything here. These guys came together and made sure it happened. So that's, that's I mean, the sacrifice is amazing. It's, it's our first time ever in London or in the UK doing a meeting. Like I said earlier, these guys came from different places. Manchester, Wolverhampton, Lucio, Lucio, different, different, different parts. We have, we have our team members who are affected by the train thing. Some participants who even got tickets who are affected by the same. Some were crying for me this morning. I'm sure they are watching. Um, we don't, um, I, I keep saying this, as a ministry, we don't lie about how God is helping us. So everywhere we go, we go because people give. All right? Um, and they're giving, and they're giving is such, such a, such, such a service to the Lord because it enables us to do what we do. We're back in Nigeria, Lagos, October 15th, uh, going to be November 26th, and a couple of meetings here and there. We've had mega hangout in Abuja this year, we've been in South Africa this year, Kenya this year. I mean, it's just a move that God, um, you know, is keeping um, because people give. Having said that, I'm also saying that just in case you want to plug into that, Trust me, I will be excited to receive. Praise God. Shall we rise together and, and just close this? Has it been a great time together? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I will thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of your presence. Thank you for the honor to do this. Lord, we thank you because when next we see it will be testimonies upon testimonies by the might of your spirit. We give you praise, we give you glory. Hallelujah. God bless you.